How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week eight, and it's rivalry week as hate has been renewed. We're facing off against Western Michigan, and the Broncos, just like us, are four and two on the season. We're favored to win this game, uh, but they are the higher overall team, although I think it's pretty close. We'll hope to get off to a good start in that game. And this one's super important because we have currently six recruits visiting. Uh, it's probably going to increase. Let's see. We have a couple of guys who locked us out last week. And then a couple more guys that ended up committing uh, elsewhere, which is a big shame. Dallas Robinson, the defensive tackle is gone. And so is John Irvin. And then we get locked out by this outside linebacker, Josh Howell. He's good. Uh, and we actually can't open the door, so that's a shame because I feel like, uh, well, he was coming to visit this week, and maybe we could have held him to the offseason, but just one more person that we can take points away from. Jesse Foreman also locked us out, and we can't open the door there. So we are down a few spots on the board, but that gives us points to deal with some other players. I guess one thing that would be important is to scout uh, these six people that are on our board that we haven't even looked at yet. See if they're any good. Dwayne Freund, the running back. Uh, 90 speed, 78 acceleration. Good break tackle. Good spin and juke. He seems all right. He can carry pretty well. How about uh, Trey Greer? The 74 overall center goes down to a 70, but still that's more than good enough for us. Decent blocking stats. He's got that good acceleration. Not too bad. Fred Bell, the corner, goes up to a 76. Terry Hargrove, the athlete, goes up to a 77. That's a nice athlete, too, because he's decently quick. Looks like he could be a wide receiver and maybe play somewhere in the defensive secondary or as a running back. Uh, but we don't need quarterback athletes, so that's good news. Luke Wright, the outside linebacker, will go up to a 74 overall. I like to see that. And Terrence Johnson, defensive end, goes down to a 69. But again, uh, anything above 65, I think, mostly going to be a decent pickup for us this year. This week could be really, really big for us. Uh, we are 89% locked on Brandon Lane, and that number just keeps getting better. Only team to offer him a scholarship, and he's visiting. Potentially, we could pick up this athlete, and that's kind of the case a lot of places. Uh, it looks like we'll get locked out with Craig McCauley this week, but we're just going to continue to try and stick with it and hope for the best. And I think uh, I'm tempted to just offer scholarships. I imagine that's the only reason why we've dropped down with Tennessee by as much as we have. But uh, maybe that's what we do this week. Offer scholarships to anybody that we haven't already. And then hope that we can pull people in. And then we'll give points to uh, people who we're close to being in the lead with. And see if we can get them to flip to our side. So we'll just start offering those scholarships. Hoping to pick guys up and seeing if we can get an insta commit obviously it doesn't work that time so i don't think we will this time around we can always hope that something good happens for us how about dallas miller uh kyle wilson george smith all these guys are going to get their scholarship offers uh, i think at this point just giving them to everybody on the board because if you're on the board we want you to play for us and we don't want to get held back by one of those scholarship offers so might be a little bit of a waste of a point in some instances, but for the most part, uh, I'm just going to do it anyways. I guess maybe not for these guys that we are this far behind. Uh, these could be good players, but we are, well, I mean, like we're gaining, but we're not actively giving them points. So I'm not going to uh, bother to spend the time doing it. And Zach Crowder, we just gave a scholarship offer to, but he's coming off the board. The remaining points I've given to Fred Bell and George Smith. Uh, only team to offer these guys scholarships, and we're not too far behind. So we should shoot up in the lead pretty quick. And then hopefully we can get them to come play for us. It kind of sucks only having the one guy committed so far, but hopefully after this week, that changes. Uh, we had some mix-ups last week. Uh, I don't know if we looked at the top 25 after the or at the end of last episode, but I think there was some upsets. Uh, Auburn was able to beat Ole Miss, uh, but this is the big one. Number two, Nebraska last week undefeated loses, as does number one, Georgia. Georgia loses to Coastal Carolina. So the Teal Boys had some bad losses to start the season, but then kind of low-key put a beat down on Georgia, 36-21. So that's a good win for them. Um, 
Always interesting when you see number one and two dropping in the same week. Coastal, after beating the number one team in the country, moved up three spots, so a little bit disrespected. They are doing okay now, uh, starting to right the ship after getting two early losses. They're now back to five and two. A um, lot of undefeated teams left. You had LSU take uh, their second loss. Ole Miss took their third. Wisconsin took their first loss. That's another top 10 team falling. Uh, and Oregon and Clemson also both fell out of the rankings. Uh, let's get into our game. Four and two versus four and two. They are a 74 overall to our 72 with a 75 offense and a 73 defense. So certainly the better team. We've got our work cut out for us. We have struggled against teams of this caliber uh, earlier in the season. Not entirely certain what we're going to be able to get done today, but we'll hope for the best. Uh, the Broncos, what kind of alternates do we have? The, we're going to put them in the, the brown pants. Uh, I just, I, I think all white can be a little bit too boring sometimes. So we'll put them in a brown and that'll hide the doo-doo stains after we beat the crap out of them. <laughs> I have to do at least a little bit of trash talking. They are our rivals after all. Offensively, they don't rank very highly in the country but much better than our atrocious offense. And they have a pretty solid defense to match up against ours. So expect this to be a low scoring game unless there's some crazy uh, situations that happen. Maybe some turnovers or just uh, big one-off plays. Uh, as far as the recruits visiting go, we are not going to focus on any of the recruiting goals. If we could manage to pass for 250 yards, it would be a miracle with Albert at the head of this uh, offense. I don't think that's going to happen. All of our top players still on hot streaks. Corey Poole, maybe he can block us another kick today. And their top players, pretty solid. 88 overall for the left guard and then down to 85 for the outside linebacker and 83 for the strong safety. Curious to see if they have a lot of skill positions on the offense that are good. But if their offensive line can just push us around, I'm not sure it'll matter. How about injuries? Well, that will change things quite a bit. Uh, halfback with a dislocated ankle. He's out for the season, and they've got a fullback and a right guard uh, questionable and probable for this game. So every single player sitting out will probably help our chances. Thankfully, we've stayed pretty injury-free, but let's just get into this and see if we can come away with the victory. Once again, a beautiful day for football. Starting to get a little bit cold here in the state of Michigan, but... Uh, that's to be expected and our players should be able to handle it. They go for heads and lose the toss. So we're going to elect to kick this one off. Just typically like to do that. The big game skill activated for Western Michigan. That has me a little bit worried. Hopefully the defense can come out strong and the special teams forces a fumble and Blair recovers it. So just like that, big games and the special team is making a big play. Well, because of that, we're starting with the ball at the red zone, and we'll get the ball to start both halves. Absolutely phenomenal as we're going to go with the read option, handing it off to Durham Finch with the beautiful spin move. He gets eight yards on the first play of the game. I thought maybe the Bowling Green game was going to be the one where we decimated a team, but maybe we just have to do it to our rivals. Durham Finch Jr. has the first and goal, so we're five yards away from taking a big lead already. Ooh, he got a really generous spot. They've put this one at the three as we're going to bring in Robertson and go with the fullback dive early. Try to get a couple of those yards out of the way, and we just got two of them. Offense looking to punch this one in, and it's going to be a QB sneak from Albert Johnson. And over the line he goes into the end zone. Got bobbled around while he was up there, but held onto the football, and just like that, a minute into this game, we have taken a 7 to nothing lead over the Broncos. What are the odds that we can do it twice? I would love to see another forced fumble here. Maybe the cold weather getting to that uh, special teams returner. He holds on to that time, gets him out across the 25, and it's time for the defense to go to work. Not certain what to expect from Western Michigan. It seemed to me from their stats like they had a pretty balanced offense. This one's going to be a run, and Eric Lane is there. Maybe to stop it in the backfield. Slows him down. Graham can't get the tackle, and it's Thomas coming up. That should have been a loss. They get two on the play, though. And now it's into the hurry up. This one handed off. Blocking is pretty solid, and that's going to be not enough for the first down third and inches. Joe Silva starting 
the game pretty strong here as they are running with ease on us we're going to try to bring a blitz on this one it's going to be a run towards the edge defense can't get there in time awfully close they call it a zero yard rush but still it's enough to move the chains this hurry up is firing quick the offense maybe feeling a little bit of pressure like they need to get moving man goes in motion looks like a triple option quarterback gets hit behind the line for a loss of four just blitzing out the runs there early maybe we have slowed them down i'm kind of expecting a pass on this second down but no it's going to be a draw play lane again can't get the tackle this guy will not be brought down marvin hill 14 yards on the carry that's one of the more successful draw plays i've ever seen as on first down we will try to bring a blitz it's a screen blair good tackle brings marvin hill down for a loss of two and this is a little bit interesting they have two quarterbacks in right now i think the other one is walker number 12 maybe they hand it off on a draw they must just have a quarterback who's a good athlete and they slot him in as a wide receiver sometimes regardless we get them in this third and ten hopefully not going to give it up this time expecting them to go to the air it is a screen graham can't get off the block great running from that wide receiver and great blocking downfield defense has had multiple opportunities to get off the field and just hasn't capitalized yet we're bringing a lot of pressure on this one trying to stop them i think i was offside on the play quarterback's got a free play uh, we'll see i'd probably expect them to accept this one just tried to get a little bit too aggressive and jumping the snap and it doesn't work out so first and five now for the broncos this one another screen good blocking no other broken tackle this offense is moving that just their third pass of the game julius greco three of three early in this one they're gonna step back to throw again and right over my head i was just waiting and waiting for him to cut but he was on a vert and i got burnt well we can return this first kick this is the game's all tied up at seven see what pool can do fielding it decent blocks oh my gosh there are pancakes all over the place pool 39 yards on that return again the offense gets a chance to start with pretty good field position obviously not as good as the last drive but can't get much better than that first and 10 going with the counter letting durham finch just continue to run that works for three yards we'll go ahead and get into the uh the scary part where we allow albert to pass second and seven on play action trying to be patient we throw it short mark morris catches it but he's four yards short of the line again so it'll be a third and four and we're gonna go for it again through the air seeing what can happen oh wide open over the middle is zach wilson tight end has it he's 20 yards downfield and we will convert the third down that one will give us a chance to continue to run the ball as we bring Morris in motion, handing it off to Durham Finch Jr. He gets tackled from behind before he's able to pick up a whole lot more than two. I was really hoping that that one was going to work out, but wasn't to be. Jerome Simmons comes in for his first carry on second and eight. The hole that he had up the middle there was massive, and there's another first down as he gets eight yards. You know, they're really struggling to stop the run so we're just gonna keep throwing it at him finch jr again getting the carry decent blocking breaks a tackle a little bit he gets three yards on first down again our offense certainly isn't as flashy as western michigan's but we're getting the job done just as well looking to go to the air on this one trying to wait be as open john wilson good catch and that's another first down so we're inside the red zone oh boy well we were able to punch it in the first time can we stay perfect on the game as this first quarter is starting to come to a close that one getting blown up in the backfield a loss of two and that's gonna be the final play of the first quarter so we'll let the clock burn out i can be happy with the way that first quarter happens uh tied up seven seven we've got a chance to retake the lead special teams with a huge turnover on the opening kickoff uh you know defense had their chances to get a stop we just need one of those to be good and i gotta say i feel confident enough that that'll happen so second and 12 to start this second quarter of the game we're gonna hand it off again believe it or not finch jr <laughs> well shoot that's third and long here 
I would be lying if I said I was confident that we would pick up a first down here. Third and 16 to go. As we will look to the air. B could be open. Mitchell? Ooh. <laughs> Tried to throw him open. Good play from the DB. It's fourth and 16, and we're going to have to just settle for the field goal here. Didn't get all of it, but kicker's good enough, so we retake the lead. But instead of seven points, it's just three. 10-7 to 7 to start this second quarter. Sun starting to set here on Rainierson. Uh, What can we do? Defense has another chance. Maybe they won't need it. Maybe we can just rely on the special teams to create turnovers on kickoffs today. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? As this drive gets underway, I'm going to keep mentioning it until the drawing. But uh, head to my Twitter if you want a chance to win an exclusive Goonmaster t-shirt. Uh... You know, follow me, retweet the post, you'll be entered to win. Stop that run for a gain of three on first down. It'll be second and seven as the Broncos really had their way with us the first time out. And oh, this is a big run. Fox is going to need to chase him down. Just get the safe tackle. We shove him out of bounds, but Joe Silva gets 32 there. Uh, I feel like there's no reason to do anything other than blitz at this point. They're just running and running and running. This time, of course, they step back to throw. Great stop. Great stop as they throw it out into the flat for, for a loss of one. This quarterback still perfect on the day as they have broken 100 yards of total offense so far. Let's see what we, they can do here. Expecting the run. Quarterback decides to keep it. No, he's going to pass. Stepping back into coverage. Oh, thank goodness that was out of position because I think I screwed up the user of Walters there. That incompletion marks their quarterback's first of the day, and it'll bring up a third and long just across midfield. Good chance for the defense to get a stop and get off the field. Stepping back to throw. Oh, my gosh. How do I miss that tackle? Oh, that is unacceptable. I just got greedy. I went for the hit stick when I didn't need to. I just worried because our tackling has been so bad, but now I've put us in a terrible position. They're in field goal range. Maybe not for much longer, though, if we can keep pushing them back. A loss of four on the option play there. Really would love to see the defense come up with a stop, but we'll see what we can do about that. Second and 14. Expecting the pass. Quarterback keeps it again on the option. Look at how much space they have because of the wide receiver blocking out on the edges. You would think that our defensive backs had never had to shed a block in their careers. The way that they're defending all of that. This one going to be picked off in the end zone. Fox comes down with it. Maybe a chance to return it, but I wasn't going to leave the end zone until we were sure. There's the stop from the defense. I feel like there were guys open, but the quarterback makes a mistake, and hopefully we can make them pay here. Every once in a while, the team just makes those big plays. You never know when it's going to come or who it's going to come from, but certainly I got to love those ones. I don't even know if that was English. 10-7, <laughs> a chance to make it 17-7 on this drive. That would be fantastic as we're going to look to throw. Go for the check down to Palmer. That'll give us a first down as we're midway through the second quarter. Albert starts the game for a five. Not a lot of yards on those four completions, but they're completions, and for him, that's uh, pretty impressive. We go with a, just a dive play on this first down, and man, they, they've been dialing up the pressure on those runs, and Durham Finch Jr. not getting a whole lot. Just eight carries for 16 yards for him so far in the day, so he'll be looking for a big button, but where's it going to come from? Blocking was pretty solid there. That'll make it a manageable third down, but I just felt like there's more to be gained on those plays. Let's see if this will do. Third and three, clock getting near two minutes. What if we bust out that triple option play that's worked so well for us this season? We give it to Jerome Simmons, and yeah. Man, the backup's having a good day. 13 yards on that one. His two carries give him pretty much uh, the same amount that Durham has already. We got to snap this one quick because they were out of position. X is wide open. Mitchell completely unguarded inside the 15 on the 37-yard reception. Good throw from Albert to find him. Uh, typically, I'm not looking towards that side of the field, so I'm impressed with myself, honestly. I know that's like a really simple read to make, but normally uh, I don't make it, so I, I got to pat myself on the back. The few times I'm able to do so. Jerome Simmons, six yards on that carry as we are just 
getting closer and closer to halftime. And if we're able to punch this into the end zone, we want the Broncos to have as little time as possible. So don't mind taking my time here. Second and four, handing it off. Durham Finch, that's a touchdown. Or maybe not. And actually, that could hurt Western Michigan quite a bit. Instead of allowing us to score and having well over a minute and three timeouts, I'm allowed to burn another 30 seconds off the clock here before snapping this ball. As we just barely get it off. Uh, the play was broken. Johnson, though, fighting, recovering, and getting into the end zone. 17 to 7. That was supposed to be a handoff, but something got a little bit wonky there. Thank goodness he held on to that. With the extra point good, you got to think. Good decision there to try and burn a little bit of clock. Just that much more difficult now for Western Michigan to do anything. Jeff Wesley almost just died. Oh my goodness. I feel bad for anybody that the Broncos are sending back there to return kicks today because it has not been a pretty sight. They'll step back looking to throw. There's a completion and a couple of broken tackles and blockers downfield. Oh, we cannot tackle Joe Silva. Big play gets them near midfield as they take their first time out. Quarterback, five wide. I'm going to use with the defensive end just to get some pressure on him for a play. And again, another tackle broken. This is unacceptable. We do force them to take that second timeout because at least we're tackling these guys in bounds. But 30 seconds left. They are nearing field goal range very, very quickly. Big second and five. There's a good tackle from Eric Lane as we'll force a third and one. And the clock will be moving as the game has gotten awfully laggy here. Just had to pick a play as the hurry up was coming real quick. This one almost picked off by Fox. Oh, that would have been huge. It's fourth and one. And it is the punt formation out for Western Michigan. So we'll see. Maybe we can do something with Poole, but we'll be in the safe zone. I've been faked out too many times recently. This one's going to be a good kick, but we'll let it bounce out of the end zone. Seven seconds left. I might try something here. This triple option has worked well for us so many times this season. We're going to give it a shot. Maybe take a timeout and give it another one. Albert Johnson, unfortunately, the one to carry that. You never want him running, but we do get the timeout off. And it's pretty much an impossible ask, but we'll just have Albert throw up a Hail Mary on this one just to see if maybe he can do something for this final play of the quarter. B, Y, somebody, if they catch that, they could be gone. Mitchell came down with it 45 yards. Unfortunately, he gets tackled and there's no time on the clock. I don't know if the Broncos were ready for that one. Could have ended in disaster. They're lucky. 17-7 as we had into the locker rooms and we get the ball to start the third quarter. So the pressure is on in this big rivalry game with a ton of recruits visiting. And you know, I haven't been focusing on it, but that 45 yards could come in huge if Albert Johnson just starts to put on a clinic passing the football and somehow manages to get to 250. Defense has done a good job. Offense has been surprisingly good. Uh, we just got to keep playing the same way we did in this first half and we should walk away with a victory. Maybe we can stun them with a great return to start the second half pool. Going to have the chance. We had beautiful blocks on that first attempt. Yeah, there's nothing doing on that one. That's frustrating. I don't get the opportunity to return a crazy amount of kicks. So when they work out that poorly, it's kind of upsetting. Uh, need to fix the clock burn there. Durham Finch, great run there. A little shimmy. Just threw the defenders off. Look at how well the team is doing. Three guys hot. The entire offensive line heating up. What can we do? Stepping back to throw Y over the middle as Morris, he's got the catch. He's not down yet, but there's a first down as he gets 10 yards. And what I got to do here is just remind myself not to pass too much. Johnson is at 129 on the day, which is pretty superb. Uh, but we don't need to get too greedy. Durham Finch Jr. cutting it back to the outside. Just barely tripped up. He was close to turning the corner there. He got three yards, but if that tackle missed, it could have been a touchdown for all we know. Second and seven, though. I'm going five wide. Palmer unguarded right now. Nobody on him, but that's not where I want to throw. Giving it to Y. Morris stopped running. Why is that a thing that our receivers have been doing this season? They've been giving up on their routes, like right as I decide to throw them the ball, and it puts them in a terrible position. Now it's third and seven. We're going to hand the ball off, and Finch picks up a big block. 
That's 14 yards and a big third down conversion. We've run for over 100 now at this point as they've got a guy with an ab strain, so they'll be missing another player. Trying to wait. A is kind of open. That was a risky throw. I got lucky that wasn't picked off, but unfortunately, Morris can't hold on to it. I'm going to be honest. At this point, I'm feeling greedy. I can't help it. I want that 250 passing yards. Look at this linebacker. Just was not wanting to stop moving. We let him settle down. Jerome Simmons comes in for a carry. He's having a great game. Third and one in what I'm going to call four down territory. We're going to pass on this one. If that doesn't work, we'll run it on fourth down. A is wide open. Zach Wilson has the catch. Eight more yards added to the tally. Could this be the first game where we see uh, Albert catch on fire? He's got the one-on-one -on -one with Mitchell. Safety's going to go over there to try and guard it. This could be bad news. Thank goodness that was just incomplete. That one again just kind of felt like a receiver gave up on the play, but I can't complain too much again. Looking for the whip route. Oh, they they ran with that perfectly, and I threw it to the wrong guy. X coming over the middle was also wide open. You know, the frustrating thing about this game is that me being stubborn and wanting to pass this much could be our downfall. They want to bring pressure. Let's send Mitchell deep. I'm looking for the running back in Simmons as they will bring a blitz. And again, this is still four down territory, but Simmons says, Coach, I got you. We don't need a fourth down. He just blew through dude. two defenders. A first and goal there. Setting us up beautifully. We'll give him the handoff on this one. He's got some space and some blocking towards the edge, and that was way too easy. Man, I was saying that they were getting good wide receiver blocking. That was a thing of absolute perfection from whoever was out there on the edge and i want to know what you guys think but to me this is the best game that our team has played all season long they've brought it in the big one the rivalry game both sides of the ball working really really well another stop from the defense this could be out of reach the added pressure of having to do this with six recruits visiting six high profile recruits visiting you got to be really impressed. This one, a handoff. Tried to guess the gap that he would go to, and I was wrong. So they're going to get a decent run there. They're going back to this hurry-up nonsense, which to me means it's time to start blitzing more and more. Quarterback steps back. Oh, man, Miller is wide open. Blair will be able to catch up to him. So no touchdown that time, but a 37-yard reception nonetheless. Just uh, as simple as me bringing the pressure and getting beat for it. This time an option. Quarterback keeps it. And we just destroyed him in the backfield. We are blowing up a majority of the options that they're running so far today. They're going to step back to pass on this one. So we'll be expecting to get this stop. Second and 14 though. A man coming in motion. It's going to be a, like a jet sweep. Graham's there to stop it for a loss of a yard. And this drive could be stalled out real quick. Not sure if the defense will be able to get into position, but we're trying to bring pressure. I'm stuck on an alignment. And this one, not picked off. Oh, Fox should have been there for his second one of the day. Or at least should have been able to deflect it, but just outsized. Number 19, a big guy. Goes up and catches that one. The guy who caught that one has been checking into this game as a receiver. And I honestly think that he's that backup quarterback I was talking about. This one thrown to the corner of the end zone. What an absolute dot. Oh, nobody was getting there besides Jordan Walker, and they, they bring it back to a 10-point lead. Uh, that was pretty tough from the defense. Had their chances, but just uh, got outplayed. Simple as that. That one's kind of a bummer. That third and 15, I really didn't think we were going to get the stop, but then two plays later, they're in the end zone. Poole getting a return here. He's out past the 25, so I'd say it was a pretty solid one. Let's let this offense get back to work. They've been doing solid all game long. If they can keep it up and get into the end zone again, I'll feel pretty confident about the rest of this game. But Broncos bring pressure on first down and drop us for a loss of a yard. What I'm hoping for on this one is just that they don't realize how stubborn I'm going to be in trying to run this ball. So uh, we'll hand it off again. Drum gets four. It's not great. Not terrible. Makes it tough on third. We've got seven yards to try and pick up as uh, Eric Lane, that linebacker for us, is out for the game with a bruised sternum. That is pretty detrimental to the defense. We'll hope that doesn't hurt us too much. Why is going to be wide open? Maybe not. Well, that is not good. A quick three and out for the offense. We're going to have to kick this one away. Hoping to see that fair catch. Not there, and it's a broken tackle by the main gunner Holt there. 
Oh, I don't want to see it collapse. They're going to start this drive from midfield. And we're going to bring pressure and just hope that it's enough. They'll step back to pass it to screen really late and recognizing it. Rawls slows them down, but it's nine yards there. Simple enough. I think that this is on me. I praised the offense and the defense, and now they're underperforming. Oh, a fumble on the option. That could have turned south real quick for the Broncos. They're lucky still to have possession, but it does back them up six yards. So it'll be third and seven with a lot riding on this one. I'm honestly expecting a run, but no, they will go to the air and look at that. More bad coverage and then another broken tackle on top of that. What if we just bring our free safety on a big blitz? Can we time it? Man goes in motion. Didn't time it, obviously. They're burning a lot of clock here. That one snapped. It looks like it's a screen. Blair, good job. Shoves him out of bounds. We'll take that. A gain of nothing. This is one of those plays where I'm conflicted because I'm absolutely expecting the run, but I'm not sure what we can do about it. A play action here would be devastating. They will hand it off, and somehow this guy, Zach Carlton, just burning us right now. Not sure how he managed to get through the line. It didn't look like there was any space to run, uh, but there he goes anyways. Doesn't care what I think. Picks up a first down. That time we do stop him, and this third quarter might come to a close. We'll see if they can get another playoff. Just get into our cover two, and yeah, that will be the end of this third quarter. So we still hold the 10-point lead as we're heading into the fourth, but with them threatening to score and with the defense kind of struggling there in the third quarter, things could get interesting for sure. Uh, you never want to have a three-point lead in the fourth quarter when you can have 10 instead. It'll be second and 11 to start up this final quarter of play. We'll see what we can do. A run. Another broken tackle. And it turns it into a third and three. Well, I'm going to sell out to stop the pass. I, I don't know why, but I just feel like they're not going to run. Still going to focus on the running back, but there it is. Stepping back to throw. Guys, open. Nobody there. Oh, that's so frustrating. We just all got burned there. Zach Fields, the wide receiver, into the end zone. Just like that, 21 to 24. We'll just have to hope now that the offense can get a drive going. 539 definitely can't just burn the clock out. And only being up a field goal means we can't just go three and out and, and rely on the defense. So decent return, but the offense is going to have to go to work. I think that a game like this just proves that our team truly is not that spectacular. You know, even when we start strong, eventually we will come crashing back down to earth. Uh, and we're going to play most of the teams in our conference pretty close. It's just a couple of yards gained on first down. That'll give us a second and seven, and I will look for the play action. Mitchell with that one-on-one, -on -one, waiting, throwing it for him. Good throw from Johnson there. So Mitchell gets out of bounds at the 45. Mitchell now with three catches on the game, but 98 yards. Man, do they want to really bring pressure here? Seems a little bit interesting. Let's go for Vert and see if we can really catch them out. You never know. Sending one deep. Pressure is there. B is open, but I couldn't get it off in time. Somebody, A or B. Gosh dang it. I just gotta show you guys in slow motion. Look at how bad this is. 79 here. He doesn't even... It's like he doesn't even try to block him. That's how bad our offensive line is. Well, what do we do here? Second and 20. Gotta be a pass. Seeing what we can do. Expecting Morris to come open. Or Wilson, I should say. Oh gosh, he fumbled the ball. Thank goodness it went out of bounds. Third and eight now. We can work with that. And as much as I don't want this to be the case, it almost might be four down territory because I don't know if I want to give Western Michigan the ball again in this game. So we'll see what we can do. Waiting, waiting, looking over the middle of the field. There's Mitchell. Holds on to it. Good fourth catch. He's having himself a game today. That's a big first down conversion. That one's going to open us up for another run. Give it to Jerome Simmons. Trying to cut it around. Just trying to get north at the same time. And we will take that six yards. He's not quite getting the workload to have a massive game, but he's doing a lot. Nine carries, I think 60-something yards at this point. It's pretty phenomenal. Over the middle, almost just threw a pick. Why do I do that? I don't understand why all of a sudden I just decide to make a terrible throw. I, I just can't help it. It's third and four. We're running into a brick wall. Jerome, not going to get there. It's fourth and one. And again, I still think this is four down territory. 
We're going to come out. We're going to give it to Robertson and just hope that the fullback can pick up a yard. This is a very crucial part of the game. I'm not trying to burn the clock yet. Okay. Now we're going to try to burn the clock a bit. Oh, less than three minutes to play. Western Michigan, we need to start burning their timeouts. More importantly, though, we need to get into the end zone. If we don't get into the end zone, we could really be in trouble. Stan Williams will take his first carry for a gain of two. And this second and eight will take us below two minutes. Stan Williams getting the carry. Again, just no blocking and a weird angle on the handoff. He's still not down, which is honestly best case scenario because it burned another second and a half or something like that. Broncos forced to take their first time out now with a minute and 55, and we're going to have to go to the air, hoping to pick this one up on third and seven. Stepping back to throw, I'm looking for Mitchell, and Sean with his fifth catch of the game, and it could not have come at a more clutch time. Shows us taking the time out, but it's Western Michigan actually taking their second. And Albert Johnson on fire. Something I don't think I would have ever said. At any point in this season, Stan Williams shakes a tackler and he's into the end zone. 19 yards for the touchdown run and that might be it. It's going to be a 10-point lead with less than two minutes to play. I just don't see how Western Michigan can come back from that kind of deficit. So we'll just have Jones kick this one away. Try to gun down there again and, and pop him. We, you know, we've hit him pretty hard so far today. Yeah, decent job that time, but now the defense just has to slow them down a little bit. Not even necessarily to stop, just slow them down. We know that they're going to be passing the football, so what can we do to stop them? An interception would be phenomenal, but I would take any kind of stop. Quarterback all the time in the world just heaves it up. His man open downfield, and that is exactly what we didn't want. There's going to be a face mask at the end of this as well. You gotta be kidding me. I can't believe it. Well, so much for slowing him down just like that. It is first in goal. and We are not out of the water yet. Oh, was our touchdown even worth it? Into the end zone. Two play drive. What the hell is going on? Really is a rivalry game at this point. They're gonna go for the onside kick. We'll see. Looks like we recovered the ball. Thank goodness. Oh, that was awfully close. Minute 27, we should just be able to run out the clock now. If we had a few more passing yards than we do currently, I would try to go for that 250. But it's too close of a game, and we just don't have enough space. Stan Williams making the most of his carries late here. He's got us a first down, and that's the final timeout for Western Michigan. And that's going to be the final dagger, because all we have to do is hold on to the football now. And we will walk away with the win in the rivalry game, which again is just huge for the recruiting. Making sure that Stan Williams stays in bounds there. He gets seven yards and the clock will continue to tick. And as we get below one minute left to play in this game, gonna let this burn down as far as we can. And this will be the final play of the game, barring disaster. Doesn't look like disaster will strike. Just having Stan Williams spin around a few times and actually we'll have to run more and more because he got the first down. Thankfully, though, we can just come out in the victory formation and take a knee. Get a little bit of extra XP as well on top of that. And you know what? No, we're, we're going to bad manners Western Michigan. There's no way this backfires, right? One second on the clock. I'm taking a timeout. We're going for the end zone. This wouldn't be a rivalry game if we didn't do some petty crap every once in a while, right? Looking to throw. <laughs> yeah, I had that coming. <laughs> well, uh, interesting way to lose. Would have really looked bad on me if that was uh, a strip sack. Maybe a scoop and score for the touchdown, but we survived. Oh, man, that would be enough to get me fired, I think, on the spot. Play of the game, Stan Williams with the big touchdown run to put us up 10 late. Uh, it's a rivalry game. It doesn't matter how close it is. As long as we walk away with the victory, it's a good day. We advance to 5-2 and two on the season now. Uh, Albert Johnson, he had a good game. Uh, seven carries. Some of those are kind of sus because they were sacks, but a couple of touchdowns passed the ball surprisingly well. We weren't able to get to the 250-yard mark, but just can't be upset with that game. Gave up a couple of long passes, but other than that, the defense played well enough. And just in general, the offense was maybe the best we've seen them all year.
Well, they gave us a little bit of a scare there near the end. If they would have recovered that onside kick, I think legitimately that we would have lost the game. But we come out with the victory. Uh, outgained them on the ground, 159 rushing yards. And there's 13 that were lost on the last play because of the sack. So it should have been more than that. And we threw for 201, which is really impressive for Albert. We did give up 271 through the air. Uh, but we had an interception in there. And then we had the fumble. So turn two turnovers, I think, puts us plus two on the turnover differential for the season. So I, I, I'm not upset. Albert, 13 to 20 for 201 yards is really good for him. And then Chris Fox, five tackles and that interception. And honestly, it should have been two picks. At the end though, we walk away with another victory. Again, five and two. One win away from bowl eligibility. I gotta be honest, early on in the season when we had those, uh, those two losses, I didn't think it was going to really turn around, and I didn't think we would be able to go to a bowl game. Obviously, it's not a given yet, but one of these teams on the uh, upcoming schedule has to be able to be taken care of. It's on the road to Toledo again, so unfortunately, we have to make another trip to Ohio, but that's just what happens when you play in the MAC, I guess. Ooh, 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 that's what you like to see. Three players committing, including the 80 overall wide receiver, Brandon Lane, and the 79 overall quarterback, Maurice Tate. Uh, sure, Jeff Bryan committed, but these two, oh, a couple years down the line, what do you think? Potential Heisman hopefuls? Sure, they might be high school kids right now, but you gotta think that that could be what really propels this program forward uh, maybe that's what helps gets us into the big 10 so we sign a five star and a four star prospect we uh get up to four total on the season which is exactly what we needed because it opens up points that we can give to other recruits we move to five and two let's see what happened in the top 25 maybe just maybe we could crack the top 25 this year we started the season uh kind of in the 30s jumped up a little bit and then skyrocketed down after our losses uh number one purdue survived against nebraska the cornhuskers were looking to bounce back after their undefeated season was ruined uh the previous week and they lost by two 30 to 28 they almost took down the boilermakers any other ranked games go down to the wire i see we have some big ones coming up next week um I swear we had more than that. Well, Oklahoma lost to Kansas, so they're two and three and barely ranked. Did we have, well, Alabama dropped out? Eastern Michigan is ranked. Oh my gosh. Hold the phones. We're sitting at 29th in the country. Well, I didn't think we would be that high, especially because our losses weren't all that impressive, but with another win and some more chaos next week, you never know. We could find our way back into that top 25 pole. Well, that is exciting. Uh, and we should get a win. Toledo is one and six. We're expected to win. We're even on overalls. So that means they're what, a 72? And then we could beat a 72 overall team for sure. That's going to have to wait though, because unfortunately that is the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button and then subscribe if you haven't done that already. And then head to my Twitter. The pinned tweet on my account is the giveaway that we're doing for the exclusive Goonmaster shirt. Again, I own the only other version of it in existence. So if you want to have uh, the second one, go to my Twitter, follow me there, and then retweet that post. Uh, that will also be linked down in the description. And while you're down in the description, you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to our community discord and the college football revamp mod. If you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later. Adios.